You probably know about Alex Jones, the funny news slash conspiracy guy. Well, he has a video game now, because that's just the timeline we're living in. Mac Chista host, and tonight we're reviewing Alex Jones' New World Order Wars. This is a retro-inspired 2D side-scrolling shoot-em-up where you play as Alex Jones as he takes the fight to the New World Order. It's a very curious game, the company behind it seems to take a lot of pride in their work, calling themselves the leading free speech-inspired game development studio, even though no one knows who they are. Hell, aside from the game's website, they don't seem to have a presence anywhere else on the internet. The only thing I can really say about them is that I don't think they're owned by Alex Jones or Infowars. I'm pretty sure they developed the game and then got Alex's endorsement in voice acting talent. Babies are being kidnapped and are being turned into a stew for the global elites to eat so they can live forever. The problems with the game start really as soon as you buy it, which I did using a prepaid debit card just to be on the safe side. As far as I can tell, there's no way to actually install the game to your computer. You have to play it on your browser. Look, I bought your game. I'd kind of like to own it. I'd kind of like to install it on my computer to play it at my own convenience. So basically, if they decide to take this website down for any reason, that's about 18 bucks down the drain. So you go to actually play the game. You click the play button on the website and it says... Please buy the game to play. Uh, well, I did buy the game, but for some reason, this page pops up every time I try to start it. The only way we found to get around it was to just keep trying until we got to the main menu. Yeah, we're off to a very great start. The game is, again, a 2D run and gunner. You, of course, play as Alex Jones as he takes the fight to the New World Order. You'll blast homeless zombies in Silicon Valley, fight Justin Trudeau at the Canadian trucker protest, and battle gay frogs on Epstein Island. We're not into the whole retro style of video games, but the graphics were. Nothing to really write home about. They don't stand out among the God knows how many retro-inspired side-scrollers there are. But at the very least, there was obviously effort put into the game's graphics, so at the very least, it's worth noting. And credit where it's due, the way the screen shakes as you fire your gun and how the enemies explode in a gory mess makes mowing down enemies pretty satisfying. But that's where my kudos end. Gameplay is otherwise very bland with little challenge being offered. The enemies don't put up much of a fight and are often unaggressive and taken out very easily. The game doesn't plan or set its levels up in a way that makes its encounters difficult. It feels like it just throws enemies at the player at seemingly random points to get mowed down with little resistance. Furthermore, there are only two power-ups, a minigun and a flamethrower, both of which are functionally similar, creating only a minimal sense of variety. To sum it up, the game requires no skill whatsoever to beat, and you can progress very easily with no real difficulty. I can't help but compare this game to one like Contra back in the day. I'm obviously holding Super C. No, it was a game where you actually had to be careful with your movement and shooting, and because of that, it offered a genuine challenge, and when you really got the hang of it, you felt like a badass. This game doesn't really have that. And that's not to say that every shoot-em-up has to be like Contra. I'm just saying that there's a reason games like these can can work so well and offer a unique experience. You just have to put careful attention into the design of the game to ensure that it's not just a mindless shooting gallery with no rhyme, reason, or rhythm. Something else Contra gave to the player was a very nice, tight feeling of control, which isn't really present here. You can only aim left, right, or directly up or down. You can't shoot at an angle, and you can't even crouch. And there are points where the lack of such abilities make the gameplay somewhat awkward. The boss fights are really lame. Like the normal enemies, they're very unaggressive, but more to it, they're very similar to to each other across the board, having noticeably identical movesets to one another, often being a hand or a tentacle swiping across the map at the player. The attacks are always easy to dodge, and the bosses themselves can be defeated extremely quickly with overall no challenge whatsoever. The only thing the game has which might hold some appeal for some people is its political humor. The not-so-inside jokes you probably got just from watching the gameplay footage in the review. Oh, Epstein's Island. Uh, I remember hearing about that. Oh, Justin Trudeau as Fidel Castro. Uh, I've heard that joke before. Oh, Tucker Carlson. I watched that guy. Oh, gay frogs. I get that reference. The humor doesn't really stem from actual jokes being told, but rather references that the player might feel mildly amused for getting. And to be honest, it really wouldn't be that bad. Okay, a 2D shooter filled with the political figures we all know and love with callbacks to events that we've all witnessed. A bit of a novelty, but I dig it. Coupled with good gameplay, it would be a fine cherry to put on top. But um, as I said before, the gameplay isn't good. So the satire feels more like a crutch that tries to make up for the game not being fun. 
and it fails. When it's all said and done, the game is extremely short and doesn't offer much in the way of content. Our first playthrough was a little over half an hour. That's it. Across five levels, there's only half an hour of content. There's no replayability, there's no difficulty selection or anything, just a high score function. Oh well, Mac, it's a game about Alex Jones. Do you really expect a game with substance? Well, I paid 18 bucks for it, so um... Yeah, I kind of do. Seriously, this game is almost $20 and there's only half an hour of content. That's just insulting! When you charge that much money for a game, you can't really coast off of it being a light-hearted, jokey experience. People begin to expect a competently made product, which this really isn't. Alex Jones' New World Order Wars would be right at home as a jokey sort of flash game. And honestly, if that were the case, the tone for this review would probably be entirely different. Hell, we probably wouldn't have even made it. But it's not a flash game. It's an actual product, or at least that's what the developers are trying to pass it off as. What we have here is a mediocre run-and-gunner with only only passable graphics, shallow gameplay, and lukewarm jokes to offer. It is, at best, maybe a mildly entertaining novelty which can only really rely on the image of Alex Jones to offer any real selling point. It's like celebrity whiskey, but at least with that I'd actually feel something. It's shovelware. Alex Jones shovelware, and I give it a 3.5 out of 10. Don't buy this game. Normally when I say something like that, it's just a recommendation for you to consider, but ultimately the final choice is left to you, the viewer. But here I'm straight up saying, do not buy this game. I don't care if you're doing it to be funny, I don't care if you genuinely like Alex Jones. This game was evidently not made to be good, it was clearly hurriedly produced to cash in on Alex Jones's notoriety and reputation to pander to a consumer base who eat up this culture war nonsense. Your money is better spent elsewhere. But that's our review of Alex Jones NWO Wars. Now if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. You've just watched a video from the Jetavision. If you want to keep up to date with our game and movie reviews, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, and join the Discord. Mac Chista Jetavision, signing out. You all have a good one.